Um, thank you for the opportunity to present today at the 13th workshop on the social implications of national security. Um, before I get started with my talk, I just wanted to thank my co-convener, Professor Katina Michael from Arizona State University, um, for the opportunity to co-convene this wonderful gathering um, and the forum around which we can discuss responsible AI and other aspects of human-centered um, design and interaction. Um, I'd like to thank also the participants um, in this workshop, both those of you who have joined physically in Washington and also those of you who are joining us via Zoom or have joined us via Zoom today. Um, so I apologize that I can't be in Washington in person, um, but I'm really looking forward to sharing some ideas around location-based artificial intelligence and what that might mean in terms of opportunities, challenges to a range of industries and application areas. Areas. Um, and also um, from a governance perspective. So when we think about governance, oversight, the need for regulation, what shape that might take when considering location-based artificial intelligence as a subset of AI and um, working towards responsible, um, which um, includes reliable, safe and trustworthy systems. Um, you know, essentially, when I think about um, location-based um, artificial intelligence, my original starting point is some work that we've been um, conducting for over a decade now with Professor Katina Michael, Associate Professor Michael Michael and some um, colleagues around the need for regulating the location-based services industry and essentially um, trying to think about whether there is a need to regulate and trying to approach this issue from a co-design or, or a consultative um, perspective or orientation. Um, so we've run over the um, past decade a series of consultations, um, stakeholder engagements um, and value chain based consultations in which we're trying to determine whether there is a need for oversight, governance and specifically um, regulatory structures as relating to location based services as a subset of mobile commerce. Um, so in that instance, we weren't really focusing on the machine learning or artificial intelligence related elements, but we we're also looking at location based services in general. And I'd like to share some of the findings from that study and see how we can translate some of those findings into the discussion around responsible AI today. Um, so effectively, when we're referring to location based services in this instance, it, um, it is any application service or solution that utilizes the location or spatial information of a device associated with a given entity um, in order to provide some kind of value added service or solution um, to the end user. And the end user could be a commercial end user um, industry based um, or business based end user or someone sort of working in the government space. So that's how um, I'll be integrating the discussion around location-based AI from that particular point of origin. Um, now, if we just look here around definitions of location-based artificial intelligence and also establishing the need for looking at location-based AI as separate to other forms of AI, um, we are essentially referring to the convergence of location and geospatial data and their corresponding applications, again, value-added um, services and applications with machine learning functionality. So our studies to date and um, this body of work builds on those studies was essentially looking at your traditional suite of location-based services, things around traditional forms of navigation, mobility, emergency, and management-based applications and other consumer applications such as location-based social networking tools and software, for instance. Um, in this instance, we're talking about that convergence, about um, increasing the machine learning capabilities, which provides us with a number of things. So it might involve utilizing data, and that includes both real-time data, um, or real-time location and geospatial data, um, in machine learning algorithms in order to, to inform them, or also utilizing historical location data logs in those machine learning algorithms. Now, once we, um, consider the use of these location data files, they're used in combination with other big data files and multiple location data logs to provide us with um, an increase or vast amounts of data um, that then inform your machine learning algorithms and are used as the basis for, for learning. Um, when we are referring to this suite of applications, essentially it is a supplement to existing location-based services with machine learning 
um, capabilities. So I think in light of our discussions around artificial intelligence, I thought it might be interesting to look at a subset of AI application um, as a means of moving from a principles or ethical framework based approach, which has been widely documented, um, through to something that can be operationalized when we're referring to things around um, governance and oversight. Um, and usually that opera operationalization occurs within the realm of um, systems design, and I'll speak more about that. Um, again, this is basically scratching the surface of this particular area around location-based AI and the need for governance, oversight, um, and establishing potentially the need for regulation. Um, and I'd be really interested to hear your feedback and thoughts around this area and around looking at um, oversight, governance and regulation in the context of a specific application or application area. Um, so the intention here is to encourage discussions about how we might choose to approach in an informed and considered fashion, um, design methodologies that incorporate um, and determine an adequate level of oversight, um, control and regulatory mechanisms. Um, so I think um, it's important to flag some of the opportunities that location-based AI provides as compared with traditional um, forms of location-based services. And those um, opportunities um, and potential for development around the accuracy of information. So the idea of producing information to the end user or create, um, generating and distributing information to the end user in the form of recommendations, in the form of predictions, and so on in a more accurate fashion um, based on that vast amounts of data. Um, it's also around the idea of information and services that are highly relevant and pertinent to the end user, so a higher degree of relevance. Um, and it has some component um, or element around enhanced profiling opportunities. Uh, the idea here is that with location-based AI, there is a potential for superior predictive capabilities. And that um, ranges across a number of application areas and can be applied to a number of application areas, and they include um, navigation and mobility. There are also many opportunities in terms of supply chain management and operations management, um, health, retail, and also in emergency management um, contexts, which are high, highly relevant in today's um, sort of global climate. We also need to consider the challenges, particularly from a socio-ethical perspective. So I think these challenges have been widely documented in the literature and I won't focus too much um, of my attention to those. I'm um, safe to say that um, the European Commission, the Australian um, government, the IEEE and other um, entities and institutions globally have developed a series of guidelines that flag the challenges associated with AI in a very generic sense, but they are also applicable to location-based AI more specifically. Um, so if we think of the privacy and security challenges, those associated with safety, well-being, um, elements around human rights, such as fairness and discrimination, and also um, the Australian guidelines um, or the Australian ethical framework around artificial intelligence specifies or states the need um, for human-centered values to be considered um, in approaching the development of AI applications and operationalizing some of the principles um, that are embedded within the Australian framework. Uh, so when we think about um, discussions or ideas around governance and oversight, it's helpful to start off by mapping out what our system or our body um, or our area uh, constitutes. And that involves, I think, and this is a starting point, again, um, I'm hoping to gain some feedback from you. A crucial starting point is to consider in the first instance here, existing work that is more general or more um, uh, in nature, things around location-based services regulation of which there are existing studies, some of which we've been involved in, to determine what kind of controls and what kind of management, oversight and regulatory structures are required for location-based services in general, not location-based artificial intelligence um, services, for example. The second aspect that we might wish to consider is the idea of systems mapping. Um, so we've got a range of policies, principles and ethical frameworks. Um, in place, and I think a lot of them have um, some overlap, some of them diverge in, in, in a number of areas. But I think moving from a principles um, or framework-based approach to the opera operationalization of these principles in a working system requires us as an initial point of call to map 
the system of interest. Um, and I'll provide some examples of some mapping that we've done in the past, not specific to location-based AI, but more around location-based services um, in general. Um, so we've got existing ethics and other frameworks around AI, which need to be taken into account when we are considering the oversight and governance challenges um, or characteristics. And finally, um, and this is not exhaustive, but these are the major elements, um, that we've considered to date, the human-centred participatory approaches to design that might enable us to gain a clearer um, picture or insights into how oversight, governance or regulation might look in the context of location-based artificial intelligence. Um, so in terms of looking at each one of those in a bit of detail, I'm not gonna spend too much time here and I'll leave that for another um, a secondary discussion or follow-up discussion post this workshop is to look at each of those elements. So if we were to look at some of our previous work around location-based services regulation, our um, consultative socio-technical study that was conducted some years ago um, involved us looking at um, various sectors or various um, types of stakeholders involved in the provision, the use, um, and the management and governance of location-based services, um, right down from the individual at a very micro level through to government entities that might be responsible for regulation. And we determined that after a process of consultation with a wide range of stakeholders across the location-based services value chain, that there was in fact a call for regulation, but that that regulation will take on multiple forms depending on the stakeholder um, of interest or the stakeholder that is concerned with a specific um, uh, use case scenario uh, where location-based services in general are concerned. So you've got the individual, the company, um, you've got the company as existing within the industry and then the industry operating within a broader, broader environmental context. And this was theorized through the lens of socio-technical theory um, and derived a lot of elements obviously from um, systems and open systems theory um, to try to work out um, the considerations from an environmental, social and technical perspective that would need to be taken into account um, where a regulatory study is concerned or a study of regulation is concerned. So if we were to look at the different types of regulatory mechanisms, there was um, the need or we established that there was a need for, as a, um, as an outcome of the consultation for ethical and moral codes, um, for internal policies and codes where companies were concerned, um, technological mechanisms as embedded within, <clears throat> within particular LBS applications, and also legislation or a modification of existing um, legislations and acts. Um, this study was conducted within the Australian context and very specific to that environment and to the suite of um, legislations um, that are in existence, but essentially we're looking at a combination of self-regulatory at the individual level, um, co-regulatory at the organisational level and also at the industry level and legislative um, mechanisms to govern the design, the development, the implementation and the use of location-based services. And I guess this is helpful to inform the translation of such a study to location-based AI as a specific um, topic area as a specific area of interest when we're thinking about the governance and oversight and regulatory challenges around artificial intelligence as related to location um, based technologies. Um, so in that particular study we considered a range of scenarios um, sitting on an, um, a spectrum of emergency management Australian risk areas ranging from minimal risk right through to catastrophic levels of risk in specific application um, areas such as emergency management. We also had more commercial based scenarios and so on. But I think when we're considering the artificial intelligence related aspects or applications, we need to think beyond the traditional LBS scenarios. And this is an example of a um, scenario that was developed using a range of um, data files, both publicly available and also derived from location um, uh, devices uh, to inform these scenarios and to replicate the dangers and the opportunities and the need um, or establishing the need for some kind of control mechanisms around these particular use cases. Um, so it's important to move beyond these traditional scenarios um, to consider how um, these scenarios might look 
where machine learning and artificial intelligence are concerned. Um, some of our scenarios around spatial data in the context of traditional location-based services applications have been documented in this study here um, uh, for your reference. Now, um, the second element that um, I think is really important to focus on is the idea of systems mapping. So when we look at, for instance, the Australian guidelines or ethical framework for AI, and we think about implementing and operationalizing that, there is a call in that particular documentation to look at specific instances, specific um, systems and specific application areas. So to try to consider AI in terms of it as a broad umbrella term and operationalize um, uh, our approach across the board, I don't think will work, but the mapping of specific systems as they exist within um, a socio um, socio-political, socio-economic and a social context or societal context in general is really helpful. Um, this systems mapping is a very um, abstract um, example, um, so there's a lot of detail that goes with this particular value chain model where we've mapped out the system in terms of the stakeholders that might be involved in regulation related discussions or design discussions um, and human-centred efforts around future iterations of specific location-based services. Um, to model an example of this in the context of location-based AI in order to determine the shape or form of governance, oversight and regulatory structures would be of a helpful point or a helpful element to consider. Um, we can't forget um, about the existing ethical frameworks, um, those by the European Commission, those by the IEEE, by um, the Australian Government Department of Industry, Science, Energy and Resources. Depending on how we map our system, um, the area or context was society um, in which it exists will determine the kinds of ethical frameworks and principles that we might wish to draw on in considering um, the form of um, governance, oversight and regulation. Um, so here's an example um, of the principles at a glance and then the application of those principles is really important and that's what I hope to sort of um, talk about as my Final, final slide. Um, again, scratching the surface here, but I think where to from um, here in terms of location-based artificial intelligence um, and something that probably fits in with the broader discussions we've had at the workshop today is around the design methodology or the choice of a design methodology and what characteristics that methodology might embody to allow us to think about governance oversight and regulation in an informed manner and in a manner that considers a range of use cases and is specific to a particular application area and therefore can be operationalized or implemented. So the design methodology in terms of what it must embody needs to acknowledge the previously described elements that I spoke about, and I'm sure you've probably thought of a few more that can either be a subset of those elements or a supplement to them. Um, so we need to acknowledge the previously described elements around theorization of systems, um, socio-technical systems, also the idea of looking to existing research around location-based services, regulation, how it might be applied in the context of location-based AI. Um, and so on, and also our ethical principles that we just spoke about. We also need to think of things um, fundamentally from a human-centered participatory orientation, <clears throat> excuse me, um, moving towards potentially co-design. As soon as we start to think about participation, human-centered approach, that value chain becomes really crucial and really valuable in determining who to talk to, who to involve in design efforts. And at some point down the track, our design methodology needs to establish the kind of um, participation that um, our stakeholders will be involved in, which can range from basic um, uh, information provision right through to actually engaging as design partners in trying to determine the need for governments and the shape of that government governance and oversight um, structures. Um, we also need to provide a means of oper operationalizing them in a specific application area and context. Sorry, that's meant to be area, um, which is quite crucial. So. Um, it's really specific and embedded um, to um, a, a particular context, whether that's based on a particular country or based um, at a sort of smaller um, level, at an industry-based level, or in a business, for instance, I think um, we can operationalize this particular approach in various areas and at various levels. Um, and also, we, the design methodology must encompass or offer a practical means of oversight and governance structures for location-based AI, so something that can actually be implemented, not principles that are vague in a sense that um, they can't actually be executed in a real-world kind of 
context. And I think um, there's quite a lot to say in addition to this, but I think I'll leave the discussion here. I look forward to hearing any feedback you might have. Um, once again, I thank you for being a part of this really valuable workshop. Thank you to Professor Katina Michael for your hard work in putting this all together, um, given your other commitments. Um, uh, but I understand your commitment to this particular workshop and its value in the past. And I really look forward to future discussions around this area um, and also around your respective topic areas. Thank you very much for listening and have a good night.